I'm Vanessa, the Associate Editor at Book Riot, and today I want to talk about some fantastic books that have magic and fantasy that I think you should be reading. Why am I suggesting these books? Mostly because they're just awesome, <laughs> but also because, as you may have heard, J.K. Rowling has gotten herself in a bit of hot water for some really transphobic statements that she recently made. This is a very complex conversation and one that I don't really even want to make this video about because frankly I don't need this energy in my life around the holidays. <laughs> but I am going to link to a piece that one of our contributors wrote kind of briefing you on, on what went down and why it is such a big deal. Putting that aside, even if it hadn't happened, I think that these authors and books that I'm about to talk about are ones that you should have on your radar anyway because they're fantastic and because magic and magical worlds and magic schools don't belong to any one person or author. There, there's more than enough to go around and these are a lot that I'm going to highlight today are actually by authors of color and queer authors, so let's give them some shine. Of course, I'm going to throw in one of my faves, the Brooklyn Brujas series by Soraya Cordova, urban fantasy set in Brooklyn, told from the perspective of each of the Mortis sisters, the last of which is coming out next year. These girls possess these magic abilities that have been kind of passed down through the family. They are like Latinx inspired, so the, the, they're not known as witches so much as Brujas, or Brujos, Bruxos, Bruxas. And so then the very, very first book, the daughter, the, for the first daughter, I believe she's the oldest, um, Alex, is about to approach her death day ceremony and like kind of come into her power. But what no one else really knows is that she secretly doesn't want these powers and devises a spell to rid herself of them and boom, everything goes wrong from there. So really amazing. Again, urban fantasy, Latinx inspired, amazing author Soraya Cordova, who is writing a lot of other great stuff. Check her out may have heard of a little old book called Children of Blood and Bone <laughs> that is by Tomi Adeyemi. The second in the series is out now and it's Children of Virtue and Vengeance. In the first book, Zelie is a young woman whose mother was killed for practicing magic. The current monarchy that's in place has banned magic from the land and has essentially treated everybody who did possess it as, you know, outlaws and has killed many, if not most of them. So the people who do possess these latent signs of having that magic are all kind of kept in secret, but something happens <laughs> in which you realize that Zelie is going to have to learn to harness her powers, hopefully restore magic to the land, and get back at this, you know, evil source that's in power. Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho is one of my faves from a few years ago. I believe it's also the first in the series. I haven't read the rest of them yet. There is this society called the I think Society of Unnatural Philosophers or something to that effect that is in charge of sort of overseeing magic in the land. This land though is being bled dry of magic and no one's really sure why they think it might have something to do with the fairy land that kind of lives next door but everybody's kind of in a bit of a uh, state because the current leader of this society is a black man that no one wanted to have power so he's facing a lot of obstacles not only within the society itself but then of course in trying to figure out what's going on with his sort of you know kingdom such an amazing book and series i've heard can't wait to read the rest of them now that i've renewed my own interest in them <laughs> the shades of magic series by v.e schwab fantastic set of books i haven't read even though i own <laughs> all three i've only read the first which is A Darker Shade of Magic. There are several different Londons in this world, all of which operate a little bit differently, have different types of magic between them. And there's this character named Lila that people either love or hate, who is a woman who's always wanted to study magic and she's told she can't because she's a woman. It's just such a fun book. I cannot wait to get into the other two with all this time that I am magically fabricating out of thin air, but there's just a, a again, a really like meaty series that you can dive into with magic and alternate worlds. And also by uh, an author who I believe, she, I know she's queer. I've been meaning to read Anna Marie Macklemore for years, bought several of their books at the recommendation of Zoraida Cordova actually when I met her once. They have so many great books I've been meaning to dive into. The Weight of Feathers sounds like it's like a feuding family thing with dark magic that I, ooh, I need to find wherever that is somewhere between Portland and here and get into it. Another really great one called Blanca y Roja that I've been meaning to look into and she's got something coming out called Deep and Darkest Red. Nocturna by Maya Motaine I read earlier this year. The audiobook I had some feelings about but overall was really nicely executed. It is about a young prince whose brother has been taken from his family in an attempted coup 
everyone believes the brother is dead, but he does not. And so he is, unbeknownst to anybody else, sort of dabbling in some darker magic and pulls this thief kind of on the outskirts of society into this particular project because he believes that his brother is just beyond like the current, you know, veil and that he is, that he can get him back. All of the magic has this amazing Spanish melded into it, like the spell casting, and it's just all inspired by Latinx tradition, so I am a huge fan. Sorcery of Thorns is one that I read this year too that I haven't heard as much about, and it's super fun. It is a book about this young girl who watches her mentor, and I can't remember what her title is, but she's basically this sword-wielding sort of protector of one of several very prestigious magical libraries get killed like right in front of her and then the guilt immediately gets placed on her even though she you know just watched it she didn't do it so she goes on the run and is then has to go into hiding there's a demon who is like a companion of this prince that she's not sure if she can trust or not or a sorcerer there's just again magic sorcery magical libraries kind of a heist situation there's a lot to love there Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey. Sarah Gailey wrote that amazing American hippo story that is fiction, but it's historical fiction about a very real time when Americans thought we were going to be using hippos instead of horses. I'm just gonna write our little... <laughs> I need to go back and read those. <laughs> but Magic for Liars was their debut work of fantasy. In it, we meet a PI who is sort of Eh, getting by on you know adultery cases and has been looking for their big break or her big break to hopefully work on a homicide case and then gets that opportunity when a teacher is killed by what appears to be dark magic at this local magic school the headmaster brings her in pays her this sweet retainer and allows her to live on campus in this you know like staff apartment what complicates things is that no one, first of all, is above suspicion. They even think it might have been one of the students. There's this prophecy thing at play about one of the students who might maybe be like an all-powerful mage, but also I can, I'm blanking on her name of the main character, the PI, but her twin sister works at the school as well and is sort of estranged from her. And they have a very contentious relationship because the non-magic having PI sister has always been jealous of the magical sister. That book was also a lot of fun. I didn't quite see the ending coming or like I maybe sort of guessed at it but not enough and I love when a book is able to do that because it feels like so much of mystery is sort of because it's not just a mystery it's kind of noir and fantasy. Um, it feels often predictable but this one I enjoyed all the way through. So those are just a few of my suggestions of really amazing works of magic and fantasy that you should check out regardless of what's going on outside in the world. With reference to Harry Potter, those stories are always going to mean so much to me as I know they do to a lot of people and I'm never going to take away from that experience. But let's just all remember again that there's plenty of magic to go around and lots of other books to get lost in. With that, I'm gonna leave you all for the rest of the year. Happy holidays for any of you who celebrate. Relax, read some books, have a yummy warm beverage or cold if you're in a part of the world where it is currently warm. I will see you all in January, hopefully with no swine flu. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for rocking with me all year long and happy reading. See y'all next year.